Hello guys, in this video I will show you the working of a simple 12 volt charger. So let's start with looking at the schematics. So this is the schematics in which we proved that a circuit works through simulation and if you're completely new to this video I do recommend you to visit circuitdigest.com to look out how we decided on these components and what does what in this circuit. So because I'm not going to explain the working over here I'm just going to show you how the project was made and how it is working now. So if you want complete details, please visit circuitdigest.com. There's a complete documentation to get started with this project and complete it on your own. So to begin with, I'll just give you a short introduction of the circuit. So we have two LM317s over here. One is to regulate the current and the other one is to regulate the voltage. So this one regulates the voltage and this one regulates the current. And we have two potentiometers to control them in real time. And this part over here is used to measure the voltage and current and the Arduino and LCD is used to monitor the present voltage and current of a charger so to work with this circuit you just have to use this section over here you don't need only this section is enough for your charger to work the other two are just meant for monitoring purpose so if you're not ready to spend with an Arduino and an LCD for this simple project you can directly go ahead and stop over this you don't have to do this I'll explain you how it works with the, with the Arduino and LCD and without the Arduino and LCD now I have made a PCB of this project so I'll tell you what software I use to make this PCB and uh, if you are worried of making a PCB or if you can't design a PCB of your own just don't worry about it I have attached all the Gerber files as well as uh, the design files so I have used KitKat for this project and if you're familiar with KitKat you can use the same design files and you can uh, edit the PCB in the way you want but uh, if you want to use the same PCB feel free to download it uh, download it and you can use it the link is provided in the description the link for both the documentation as well as the other downloads will be provided in the description and uh, let me open KitKat now so this is our KitKat schematics the same schematics that I showed you for simulation is redrawn over here so that we can make a PCB with it so this is a KitKat simulation and uh, the PCB is also done so this is how our PCB should look once it gets fabricated and uh, there's a cool feature in KitKat which I do love very much so I thought I'll show it to you so and it is called the 3D viewer this 3D viewer will show you a 3D view of how your PCB will look once it gets fabricated so you can zoom in look look on how the sill screen will look like you can get to know what are the spacings you have provided and you can also turn it back and look how the tracks are drawn where will be the holes and you can distinguish between the small holes and the larger holes you can know uh, how your it gives you a rough uh, approximation of how your PCB will look like once it gets fabricated so this is our PCB and I gave it for fabrication and it's ready so now let me open the camera and show you how the board has turned out so this is our printed circuit board that I got it from my local vendor. It has a decent finish and it just works for the purpose. So this is our board. I hope you can see it. So all the components are mentioned over here. And once you get this board fabricated, there's a file called BOM, the bill of materials that would be attached along with this project. I'll show you how it will look like is called the bill of materials which will be generated by your KitKat itself and this will tell you what will be the value of the components for the respect to reference so I'll keep this on one side and open the camera over here and I'll show you and once if, so when you get your PCB just look on for this marking so for example U1 and U2 is here I hope the camera is clear enough to show that you have all the namings over here for example u4 is your Arduino. if you're confused what component is what you can use this files in which the reference and the value and the library name everything is given so you can just download it and verify it while you're assembling it so I have an assembled board over here it should look something like this when it is completely assembled and I'll go through the important parts that I mentioned in the schematic so this is your diode bridge that converts your AC to DC some smoothing capacitors over here and the most important part the two LM317 the first one is used to control your current and the second one is used to control your voltage and the potentiometers here respectively the first one controls the voltage and the second one controls your current and 
uh, an op amp and then shunt resistor to measure your current and uh, uh, potential divider to measure your voltage and these two terminal blocks are used to uh, feed the input and get the output so this block here is used to uh, feed from your transformer and this one over here is used to feed uh, is used to give you the output let me enlarge this yeah and this one gives you the output and uh, this Arduino Nano can be mounted whenever it is required to be as I mentioned it is not necessary to have this Arduino Nano or this LCD with this charger it is just for monitoring purpose and I do recommend you to put this perk stick over here so that whenever you are done with the monitoring you can remove this Arduino and use it for some other project similarly the same thing can be done for LCD also but I have fixed it so it's up to you you can either fix it or use it as a temporary one and this will be our transformer this is a 606 center trap transformer meaning you can either use it as a 6 volt step down transformer or combine together as a 12 volt step down transformer since we will be needing 12 volts to charge a battery i am gonna directly use this and power the board now and uh, this is the battery that we will be using to show demonstration right now and the output can be taken through these two alligator clips the black one will be connected the black one will be connected to the negative terminal and the red one will be connected to the positive terminal now let me give the connections without the Arduino and show you how it works and then later i'll connect the Arduino and show you how the monitoring also works okay now a hardware setup is ready as i said i have connected the transformer to the input side and two alligator clips to the output side and i have hooked up this multimeter to the alligator terminal so that we can watch our output voltage over here so now let me turn on the transformer so once i turn it on the output yeah so once i turn it on the output is around 11.59 which is uh, nearly 12 now let me increase it so that we can get it more than 12 or nearly 13 so this is the potentiometer that we have to use to increase the voltage so let us increase it to 13.8 yeah that would do so now i have increased the voltage to 13.8 we'll connect it to our battery and check how it charges i'll remove the alligator clip over here place the 12 volt 1.2 inch battery connect the negative to the negative positive to the positive side and let me also add the multimeter to show you the voltage Okay, the voltage has reduced because it is getting tallied with the battery's voltage. As you leave it, your voltage will increase gradually. I have tested it with this battery and the charger works fine. So, this is how the charger works without the Arduino or the LCD. So, if your Arduino is not plugged in, your op amp, your LCD will not be powered because those two are powered by your op amp's 5 volt, I mean the Arduino's 5 volt supply. Now, let me remove all these and plug in the Arduino and show you how you can monitor the value as it gets charged. Okay, now I have hooked up the Arduino and powered it with the USB and we have a voltage and a current displaying over here. And as I mentioned earlier, this LCD and this op amp will be powered by the 5 volt supply of the Arduino. So if I remove external the device has been removed, the Arduino, the LCD will also turn off. Now let me power it on again. External device discovered. And Automatic scan started. Simple Opening up zero. Introduction saying that it's a 12 volt charger from Circuit Digest, and it tells you the current voltage and the current that is being given away from the charger and I, I have compared it with the multimeter here so the multimeter shows 12.02 and 
uh, display shows that it is 11.97 so that's not a big difference and it is okay and it is tolerable I'll show you the Arduino code also so that you know uh, the Arduino code doesn't have any big uh, complicated things over here it's just uh, uh, some uh, setup loop and a while so, uh, I'm sorry it's just a bunch of functions one is your setup function and another is your while loop and here in the setup function I am just giving a simple introduction saying that it's a 12 volt charger from circuit digest and in the loop we will be measuring the voltage and current through the analog pins A0 and A1 and and multiply it against a multiplier so that we get the actual real time voltage and current and then just display it. Now let's get back to the camera and as you can see there is no current flowing through it because the switch is turned off now I'll turn on the charger so this 11.94 is the amount of uh, voltage that is present inside your battery so the potential divider reads reverse so it reads from the opposite side so it reads how much voltage is in your battery and it displays and once you switch it on the charger starts to operate so it shows how much current is flowing through your battery and what is the current voltage state and you can again compare it with the multimeter over here so your multimeter has increased to 12.21 and your LCD shows 12.15 which is pretty much close again so just leave it off and you can come back and check in uh, like a 15 minutes interval and check what's your current now and when it goes to zero it means your charging is complete and that's it you can remove your charger and your battery is ready to use use it for any kind of robotics project and once it gets exhausted you can connect it back to the charger I have tested charging my battery a couple of times and it works excellent so if you are trying this project do let me know the feedbacks and thank you for watching.